<clears throat> All right. Well, here we are. So as uh, sermons happen, I don't know if, you, if I've told you this before, but uh, you start out writing one thing, and then as you're going through the sermon, uh, the sermon kind of, the, the Holy Spirit, I hope it's the Holy Spirit, right, is moving you on over, and, and it shifts. Uh, your title is not quite the title that I ended up with, because uh, really kind of what I did is I, I sat down and I started asking this question, what, what is church? I... Uh, I think it's an important word, and we should probably should figure out what we mean by when we say it, because we, we use a lot, right? And uh, the first thing I realized, uh, see, what I was doing is I was writing out a plan. See, I'm planning on uh, planting a church, uh, going to a place that doesn't have a church. I'm, I'm looking at, at going out there and starting. So the first thing I need to do is, uh, well, if I'm going to plant a church, what is church? So uh, I start looking, and i got to tell you, the first thing that I, I realized is that uh, for a very long time, most of my life, as a matter of fact, uh, I used a definition for church uh, which was not true. As a matter of fact, it was, it was a huge thing. So there's the question, what is church? That, that was the question I asked. What is church? Well, here's what I noticed. I noticed a lot of times when I was using the word church, I meant a building or a location. And I'll tell you, as I've, as I've been studying and digging down into, into what church is, I realize that of all things, it's not a building or a location. There's a whole lot of things it is, but that's one thing it ain't. Church is something else. Now, there's a, there's a community of believers out there that I really like. Uh, I like the way that they do that. Because what they'll do is they'll put on their, their marquee, they'll say... The uh, whatever it is, they'll say the Brethren Church meets here. That's what they put on the marquee, and I'm like, hey, you know what? That's smart because the first thing that we see is that it's people. Church is people. So when I start looking at it, I start looking at various places. The first thing I, I wanted to do is, is I, I go to this one. Now, this is, this is in your Gospel of Luke, chapter 18. If you want to go ahead and turn, turn to it. This is at the end of the story, sometimes called the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler says, what do you have to do to get the kingdom? And, uh, and... And Jesus gives him the first answer, which is be perfect. And he's like, well, I, I've done that. I am perfect. I've, I've done all the Ten Commandments, all ten of them. 100%. And he said, sure, go ahead, just sell everything and follow me. And he went away sad, right? That's the, kind of the thing, because really he coveted his money. He, he idolized his money. And Jesus kind of went, look, this is, really he had done all ten and then there's that whole moment where they're like, well, how, if this guy who's so blessed by God can't get to heaven, how can anybody get to heaven? And, and Jesus said, without, without God, there's no way. And this is one of those light bulb moments. Peter, every so often, has those light bulb moments. Bling, bling. And he's like, wait a second. We are following you. You said what we need to get to the kingdom is to follow you. And this is, Peter said, we've left our homes to follow you and uh, verse 29, yes, Jesus replied, and I assure you that everyone who has given up house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will be repaid many times over in this life and will have eternal life in the world to come. And I think it's important, this is one of those things, when I talk about church, I think it's important to come back to this because so often we blow through this. We think about our life with Christ we think about Christianity. We say, I gave my life to Christ, and we're always talking about salvation so often. That's the last part. The eternal life in the world to come. It's good. It's the fire insurance. Fantastic. You got it. But don't blow by the in this life. When it says the mother and the brothers and the, all of that sort of thing, in this life, he's talking about church. Holy cow. Hey, this is a big thing there. This is really big. 
So oftentimes as a, as a pastor, as a chaplain, I'll have somebody come up to me and they'll say something like this. They'll say, you know, I, you know I'm, a, I'm a Christian, but do I have to go to church to get to heaven? No. No, you don't. It's not a have to. But the, in this life, to get to in this life, you got to go to church. If that makes sense. Will you, will you go to heaven if you listen to the Bible on radio? Absolutely. If you just become a Christian and you just hide in a little cave, you, you will go to heaven and that's all you'll get. But this is a big thing. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take it back for a second and we'll look at the, the whole idea that it's you'll get mother and parents and children and all that. We see that really when it comes down to churches, at first, at its heart, we see relationships. It's a relationship. A couple different tiers of relationships, but let's just start out with that. The first relationship, primary relationship, is our relationship with who? Yeah, Absolutely. First relationship that we have with church is that we're connected to God. That makes it a little bit different than any other social organization we have out there, right? So the first thing is, is you have that vertical relationship with Christ. You have the vertical relationship with God through Christ. Boom. That's the first level of it. But the second thing is that horizontal relationship, the connectedness to other believers. I think it's important to realize that that is a gift. So the first thing that you have is you have, you have the fact that it's, it's a relationship. What is church? Well, it's a series of relationships. It's interwoven. It's connected relationships. It's a whole lot, bunch of different people connected together to serve Christ. Hence why we're called the body of Christ, right? I think it's important to remember that this is a gift. This is a blessing. Sometimes I talk about uh, healthy pack living, right? That's what I, when I'm, when I'm talking to people that are non-believers, when I'm talking to a chaplain and I'm, I'm trying to teach people how to love thy neighbor, and sometimes coasties or marines or sailors might have a problem with me saying love thy neighbor because they'll, they'll not understand what I mean. And then I'll just say healthy pack living and they'll go, oh, that makes sense. In a sense, church is that healthy pack that we were all designed to be part of. Not only are we a, a healthy collection of human beings, we're a healthy collection of human beings doing what we're designed to do. We were designed to be connected to God and to each other this way. So it's a gift. Now, let's flip on over. We're going to flip on to Matthew. Does this one? Matthew 28. Does this look familiar? I think uh, Aaron, Aaron did this a, a few weeks ago, right? The Great Commission. When talking about it, I, I think it's important to kind of hit uh, the Great Commission when we're talking about the church. So when I look at this. Uh, so Jesus came and he told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching uh, these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Kind of our commissioning ceremony. Now understand, this is not a, spe a specific lesson only for those, those 12 special people, or 11 at this point, right? Right, that's... That's not, this is to, who? This is to everybody. How do I know that? Well, he's saying, surely I'm going to be with you even to the end of the age. He's not talking about those 11 guys because you can't find those 11 guys anywhere on the planet right now. Right? So the you, he means, is all believers. And you kind of see how it's like the empowerment goes to all believers and not only the first generation of believers, but all the generations of believers that will come after that. 
This is an authority that continues to pass on from believer to believer to believer. So, from believer to convert to disciple to, to convert to disciple. See how it just kind of keeps growing and growing? I thought about that shampoo commercial that very few of you remember. Do you remember that? I told, told my friend and they told theirs and so on and so on. You know, yeah, never mind. You have to be over 40 probably to even, even have a hope of seeing that commercial. So what we see is that it's a relationship, it's a gift. But you know what? We have a mission. That's spreading the gospel as you go do these things. Make disciples. So when I think about church, I go, okay, it's more than a social collection of people functioning in a healthy way. It's a healthy pack of humans assembled by God to do a specific mission. To go into the world, making disciples. That's big, right? I don't think we should blow past the, pack, past the fact that Jesus said he was going to empower us, right? All power and authority has been given to me, and I'm giving it to you to do this mission. And yeah, that's pretty, pretty powerful, empowering, right? Now we come to the section of our verse. I think this is an important one to come to. Um, a lot of times, uh, this is the, 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 where we're going to be at today. We're going to be in 1 Corinthians 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I think this is an important thing, because when we talk about church, we use words like membership. Membership, you've heard that? Club, clubs have memberships, you can join them. Do you realize that they kind of got that from, from this? It's, it's, Paul's, it's Paul's analogy. Where he talks about a body and its members, fingers, toes. So we're a body, body made up of members. So when the Kiwanis talk about membership, they're really kind of co-opting our word. Like body ship, I guess. Would be. So we'll go ahead and I'll start reading here. We have uh, 4 to 11. Uh, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to, to still another the interpretation of tongues. Hey, let me just throw this out there. There's a whole lot of gifts here that have been thrown out there, right? This is not a complete list. Every time Paul talks about gifts, he uses he throws out some other things because he says he's just listing stuff. These are all a bunch of stuff. If you want to look at the beginning, I guess you could say that there's some broad categories. You could say, I guess there's, there's, uh, there's service kind of stuff. There's working kind of stuff. There's help kind of stuff. I guess you could make broad categories. But the truth is the Holy Spirit empowers believers to do the mission that he wants done right in that one spot. At this point, he says, what we need is we need somebody that's this kind of specialist. Poof. He goes, okay, what we need is we need somebody, we need an IT guy. Poof. Wouldn't it be great in your commands if you could just do that? Right? In your workspace? You're like, you know what? I need somebody that's this kind of specialist. Poof, you are now them. It's kind of like cheating, I guess. The Holy Spirit's cheating a little bit. He's like, poof, he empowers people. But I think that's an amazing thing, isn't it?
I think it's important, though, is that when we see that God is empowering people, he's not empowering just one person in the church to do one thing. He's empowering everybody to do something. We're a giant jigsaw puzzle. Somebody asked me once, you know, what, what, the favorite, what is the favorite thing that, that I see in the church? And, you know, what, what do you like the best about church? I say every Sunday, I get to stand here and I get to look out in the congregation. And I get to see the jigsaw puzzle. I get to see an amazing web of people that are woven together by the Holy Spirit. All sorts of different folk coming in empowered by God to go do things. Man, in a sense, that's, that's the amazing thing about being this guy. Or yeah, this person up here that gets to speak, to the, he gets that picture. Gets to see that. This is only one gift in the church. So the first thing is, church is diverse. It ought to be. In places where the church is not diverse, I think there might be something that we might need to look at ourselves. There have been a couple times where I've preached at a church that was all one, one color. It's weird for me, because I come from California. We don't have families that are all one race. It was weird to be in a church that was all one race. I think there should be diversity. I think there should be ethnic uh, uh, Economic diversity. We should have, we should have people of different walks in their life, because that's how God works. That's the, that's the quilt that He decided to make. Now those are all physical stuff, but but what we're coming here is we're coming more than physical stuff. When we're talking about gifting, we're talking about how God made you. We're talking about personalities. We're talking about uh, gifts, things that you can do, talents. Everybody in here is empowered by God. God called you. God called you out of the world, wove you into his church, and empowered you to do something. Some of you have been called to come up here and, and talk. But you know what? This is a small picture of, of all the ministry in the church. All of you are empowered to go out into the world and do something. We're diverse. I think it's important to focus on that because you know what? Sometimes I think that not only do we have a tendency of running down other people because their gifts don't fit into what we expect, but sometimes we have a tendency more so of running down ourselves. Because our gifts don't fit into what we would expect. Surely God couldn't use somebody like this. So picking up in verse 12. The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and though all the parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for this reason, cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But, in fact, God has arranged the parts of, in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? 
as it is, there are many parts, but one body. He's making a big point. Can you tell? Paul is beating the drum here. Because we have a tendency of doing some things. First of all, we have a tendency of grouping into affinity groups. Listen, I like to wear Hawaiian shirts. I do not think every pastor should wear a Hawaiian shirt. I don't think it's in their giftedness. I don't enjoy wearing suits and ties. There are pastors that enjoy wearing suits and ties. They're supposed to be that way. I'm supposed to be this way. When I come to church, I see church as kind of a family reunion. This is how I dress in a family reunion. Maybe a family wedding, I might dress up a little bit more. But when I, that's how I view it. You know what? God made a whole lot of people that view church this way. But he didn't make everybody to view church this way. There are some folks that want to dress up for church. God bless them. That's what they want to do. That's where they come from. And you know what? That's God, how God made them. They have different giftings and different strengths, and I have gift, different giftings and different strengths. God was not interested in uniformity. He is always interested in unity. We are all in the team of Christ. Now, my music today was a little loud. My shirt was louder. You don't have to have loud music to do church. You don't have to have large, loud shirts to do church. As a matter of fact, church is going to appear however it does, depending on the relationships of the people that are here. Fifty years ago, different groups of people would have been here. Church would have looked differently. In 150 years, it's going to look differently even still. God's going to weave together a, a, a quilt from that group to do whatever ministry, whatever mission he has for them to do. Now, I think it's, it's amazing when I, when I think about how often uh, we do things like we, we break into denominations. I just want to say this. I don't think denominations are of the devil. I hear, that, I hear people say that sort of thing sometimes. I don't know if you've ever... Have you ever done like a, uh, a large group run? Like individual run, like um, a half marathon or 5K or whatever? I don't know if you notice this, but when, when you do a 5K or when you do a half marathon or a marathon, what happens is, is people that are running that have similar paces tend to clump together. So suddenly there's these clumps of people to get, come together. What's a denomination? It's a clump of people running together. As long as they're following Christ, good on them. If they want to swing on chandeliers, great. I would not encourage it in here. First of all, you've got to have some serious up to get to those. But, uh, but that's the deal, right? I, I think that we need to see that diversity. If you've got family members that are really stern and really one other direction, God bless them. That's how they want it. That's how God wants them to be. And I'll tell you, those, those people are gifted in doing things that, that God would want them to do. If we as believers look at our mission. And look at all the hurt out of there, all the pain, all the things that we can be doing. We can be terrified into inaction because there's too much stuff for one body of, of believers to do. But here's the deal. We're not the only jigsaw puzzle piece. We do the things that we were equipped to do. God will call out other believers to do the other things. We should work together. So we see it's diverse. We see more than that. We see that we should be unified. That was Jesus' prayer for his, belie his believers, is that, that the world would know that we were his followers by our love for one another. I know I feel that one more than once.
Now you who are one body of Christ, and each one of you is part of it. Each one of you is part of it. And in the church, God has appointed first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles. Also, those having gifts of healing, those able to help others, those able to gifts of administration, and those speaking in different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all work miracles? Do all have the gift of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But eagerly desire the greater gifts. Here's the thing. God has done amazing things through his believers. I'm not teaching something new. As a matter of fact, the church has been doing it right for a little while. How do I know this? Think back. All of you who have come to, to know Jesus that are here did not come to know Jesus because I came in here and I talked in this today. As a matter of fact, you think about it, you're being called out of the world and called into the church probably was not because of some pastor who gave an amazing sermon. Now, there might have been a culminating point where at one point somebody said, hey, if you'd like to know Jesus, come on down, and you came on down. That may be your, from your tradition. But here's the deal. Long before you came on down, you went to that church because somebody asked you. You decided to give Christianity a, ch a chance because some Christian ministered to you in some way. What is the church? That's the church. The church is organic that way. The church is dynamic that way. It's unified. It's active. I would even say, I'm going to do damage to, to, to grammar here a little bit, but I would say that while it is a noun, there's an element of verb in it. When we look at all those pictures of what the church is, everything is something doing. Go and make disciples. I'm gifting you and empowering you so you can do something. Fixing a car for Jesus, right? Or whatever the deal is. Whatever the ministry is, it's just out there and it's done out there. And the generation before us were doing it right because that's how we came in here. And now it's our job. It's our opportunity. What is church? Church is a gift to. It's a gift. It's a verb. It's all of these things. It's an opportunity. It's a pack. It's dynamic. It's unified. It's diverse. That's what church is. In a moment, we're going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and say say a little prayer here. Um, Let's go ahead and bow our heads if you want to go ahead and do that and reflect. I just want to give you a chance. Because I, I don't know about you, but sometimes I have found that I've fallen into the trap of thinking church is a location. Or maybe an event. Churches from 10.30 to 11.30. Unless the guy's talking long, then it's 10.30 to 12. Heavenly Father, I surrender to you this. The idea, all the ideas, all the misconceptions, all the stereotypes, everything that I believed about church, Lord, I set that aside and I come to you and I say, help, help me understand it. Lord, help me understand church the way that you see it. May I see my brothers and sisters in Christ here and the, and the diversity and the empowered uh, gifts that the Holy Spirit has given them. Lord, can I, help me see the woven quilt that you've made here. 
Lord, help me understand what my ministry is. Give me the courage to step forward and cooperate in this. And Lord, I know all of that starts out with that first relationship with you. And there may be people here, Lord, today that do not have a good, strong relationship with you. Lord, I pray that you, you give them the courage to, to surrender, to surrender to you in a prayer and say, Lord, I give this all to you. I accept your, that you died and were rose, rose again for me. Lord, help me surrender my life to you so that you are the boss of my life. Those things you tell me to do, I'm going to do. Those things you tell me to stop doing, Lord, I'm going to stop doing with your power, with your strength. Lord, help me make those relationships right, those horizontal relationships, those relationships with other believers, those places where I struggle. Lord, give me the courage to step out in faith today. Lord, that as I live my life, I bring glory and honor to you. Lord, I thank you for your spirit, your Holy Spirit, which called me out of the world, that's empowered me to do this ministry. And I give you thanks for what will come tomorrow. Thank you, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, now this is where normally I would, I would play some music, but instead of playing some music, here's what we're going to do. We're on 11.30. I'm going to do one more prayer for you because that's what I like to do. I like to close with a benediction. A benediction is a blessing. Um, the benediction I, I give often comes out of Numbers chapter 6. This is my prayer for you. This is how I dismiss you. I dismiss you with this benediction, this blessing. Now my prayer, prayer for you is this. Lord, I, I pray... May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you, that he's gracious to you, and that he gives you peace. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.